here and line up to this diamond for, for me. But I had to Don't face. let the quarterback pull it. Make these running backs be so quarterback. Welcome to X's and O's and Joe's. I'm Gene Clemens. It's great to have you here today. We have a special treat. We're going to be looking at some offenses from the playoffs that have been spectacular and ways to stop those offenses. This is our defensive session. So we're looking at ways to stop those offenses. And first up, we're going to stop Lamar Jackson in the diamond formation. One. So to understand how to stop Lamar Jackson in this diamond formation, you have to understand what it is they do, how they do it, and who they've been doing it to. So I have up here a 4-3 base defense, um, cover two shell that the Cincinnati Bengals ran when they were up against this diamond formation. So there's two things you want to remember. You got a personnel. They run a 22 offense when it comes to personnel, that is two backs, the fullback Richard, and the tailback, either Ingram or Edmonds, and the two tight ends, I believe it's Boyle and Andrews or Andrews and, and, and Hurst, whichever the two tight ends are. There's a tight end here, there's a tight end to the weak side, excuse me, there's a fullback to the strong side. So you know if it's 22 personnel, there's a chance that you can get this formation. That is big in helping you to game plan against these teams. So they have a 4-3 look, tilt, a tilt five technique, which tells me that this guy is a spill tech. He is going in, he's trying to make everything flow outside. He has no contained responsibility. Well, for the Ravens, this is easy. This is easy money because we know the Ravens are going to read that defensive end. Everything else just becomes elementary. This ace block right here, he's coming down. He's going to work to this dude right here. This guy's coming around for the first force. He's up on the corner. He's coming around for the second guy, either that way or he's coming through this way. This guy, these guys are going to double team, work to that backer. This dude is cutting off. So now when this back comes through here, this quarterback's going to read that in. If that end takes the cheese, he set the trap, he's out of there. You're not getting him for 10 yards plus. That's how they've been taking advantage of the 40 front or an even front defense so far this year. The Ravens have had a lot of success versus the odd front as well. This is a, form, this is a defensive front that, the, that the, the Steelers and the New England Patriots use versus um, the Ravens to try to alleviate the ability to read. Notice that they put the head up zero and two four techniques over the tackle. Their thought process was, okay, we're going to make Lamar Jackson read this guy outside, which is going to kind of string it a little bit wider than they wanted it. However, this is what the Ravens did. The Ravens arc released with this tackle to block this outside linebacker. They still came with the combination on the nose. He climbed to the backside. It was a cutoff on the backside. This front side guy works up to the force defender who's now the strong safety. This fullback is now working inside out. If this linebacker comes hard, they're going inside to take it. We're still going to read, they're still going to read this in. So when this in, when this back comes, and this end takes the cheese, Lamar Jackson is out of there, and you can ring up 10 plus yards or even a touchdown. But also, this becomes more dangerous because now look at the distance between the defenders. So when this guy comes down and he's taken by the fullback, if this tailback catches a seam because this guy decided to stay outside, nobody's there but the free safety, and we always say, that the free safety is the runner's responsibility. So either Lamar has to deal with them or this running back has to deal with them. Now that is cash money when it comes to running this play. So how, how are the Titans going to be able to stop this type of offense when you have that level of a Joe back there? I'm going to tell you how. Okay, so this is how I would prepare 
and line up to this diamond form formation when I had to face that monster right there at quarterback. The name of the game is do not let the quarterback pull it. Don't let the quarterback pull it. Make these running backs beat you. So what we want to do is we want to eliminate the opportunity to read for the quarterback. Now, we know based off of the way that the, um, the, way that the Patriots and the way that the Steelers lined up in these four techniques that they want this tackle to work to the linebacker to try to reach that linebacker and still try to read this defensive end right here. But here's the problem. Here's the problem right here. This is Harold Landry. Good luck trying to reach him when he's screaming off the edge. So we have the advantage of him versus a tackle trying to reach a ghost nine screaming off the edge. That means that we're going to have Jeffrey Simmons playing like an offensive line. He's going to get those hands on that tackle and not allow him to get to Landry before Landry's able to make his way into the backfield. So Jeffrey Simmons is in the four technique. He's engaging middle of the man, trying to keep him from getting out. Landry is screaming off edge, looking to box in. He's not looking to spill. He doesn't want anything to get out of, outside of him. He wants to box everything in. But he's screaming off edge. He cannot be reached. He's also going to subconsciously disrupt the path of this tight end that really wants to avoid him and get outside up to the safety. But he's going to disrupt the path because he's going to come so fast that this guy has to make an angle underneath or bubble over the top. It's not going to be clean for that guy to just come around. So he's going to disrupt that. you got Jeffrey Simmons holding on to this tackle, two-gap reading. You've got Jarrell Casey in a two-technique, two-gap reading. You've got my boy Jones on the backside, two-gap reading. As soon as he sees the quarterback open up away from him, he's going to attack the A-gap. So now we've taken away any cutback lane for this running back. He's going to attack the A-gap. As soon as Mac sees that quarterback turn his back to him, that's Mac. He's going to attack this A-gap. You're just asking yourself, well, how is Mac in there? He's the fourth defensive lineman that I'm going to bring in, and I'm going to take a Dory Jackson out of the game. I'm going to go with two safeties and my cornerback locked up man-to-man -man on their number one. Backside. On the backside, I've got my linebacker. He's sitting there waiting. That's Correa waiting in a ghost nine, slightly off of the ball. His job is to check for anything, cut back anything that would be a reverse or a boot out. And if nothing comes, he gets into the action. So he's here and he's sitting. Now, what is this center going to do? Is he going to try to double? Because everywhere he doubles, if he tries to double at the first level, he leaves these two linebackers to roam free. And there is no way you're going to be able to win if you let Jayon Brown and, and, and Rashawn Evans, excuse me, Rashawn Evans roam free without blocking. These defensive linemen have essentially become offensive linemen. Their job is to block everybody up front. These guys get to roam free. Even if this center tries to reach or tries to climb, if he tries to climb to Evans, that's a terrible block to try to make. But if he does that, we have this sold up. The back has to cut back right into Brown. However, because the read is taken away, Lamar Jackson's only thought process really is to hand the ball off unless he goes rogue and then just tries to become Lamar Jackson. So we have that guy coming. We've got this guy coming around. But if he's coming around, where is he coming to? All of this is traffic now. If he tries to climb to the next level, this guy is going to be able to get in there and make a tackle in the backfield because that guy can only try to wash him down. If this back is able to cut back even further, Max there. If he's able to try to get out the backside, Correa is there. We've got Kevin Byard over the top. 
to be able to take anything away. Kevin Bayard's responsibility is this tight end, man to man. So he has that tight end. He's locked up with that guy. So if that tight end tries to go off into a route, if they try to do a play action off of this, Bayard has a tight end. He comes off. If this, if this tight end tries to get into a route, Vaccaro has this tight end man to man. If the second back tries to come into a route, the first linebacker, Evans, has him man to man. So they're going to peel off if there's any type of play action that happens off this play. But now, look what's happened. Here's your back. Where is he going? This might be the only area he has, and he's running right into a linebacker's. If the quarterback tries to pull it, where is he going? All of this mess in here. He's got to get by Landry. Landry will be in the backfield deep, as deep as he is, making him cut up underneath. If he cuts up underneath, we have bodies to rally to him. Now, at the end of the day, he's still Lamar Jackson. But we've taken away all of the clear, defined lanes for him to run through. In my opinion, their worst blocker in this in this scheme is this backside tight end, this, this weak side tight end that's back in the backfield. Because here is our strength with this tight end. This weak side guy, this is normally Andrews, this is normally Hurst. That guy is the worst blocker out of all of these blockers. Rashard's a good blocker. They're going to do a good job outside of blocking um, over here. Good job. But this guy is the weak link. So if we can disrupt here, keep him off the car row, You've got Landry making um, Lamar Jackson stop his feet and let everybody rally. If he hands the ball off, if he hands the ball off, we have seven people in the box that can take care of the run. We also have two safeties for support. And that is how, if I was in charge, I would have the Titans handle this diamond formation. That's all the time we have for this segment of X and O's to Joe's. I'm Gene Clemens. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you join us more. We're going to be doing a, another one on how the Ravens can stop that monster in the backfield for the Titans, Derrick Henry. So stay tuned for that. But like, subscribe, enjoy what we're doing. Use this information for your own teams. It, it comes in handy. Thank you. You have a great one.